After an epic six-day rally, Elon Musk's fortune is coming back down to earth, at least a little bit. Stock in Musk's electric car company tumbled on Wednesday, the most in eight years. Even before the plunge, investors and analysts were skeptical of Tesla's market value. Steve Eisman, the investor made famous by The Big Short, told Bloomberg Television the recent run-up in Tesla is inexplicable. Look, everybody has a pain threshold, and, you know, when a stock becomes unmoored from valuation because it has certain dynamic growth aspects to it and has cult-like aspects to it, you have to just walk away. Instead, Eisman remains bullish about General Motors, calling it, quote, reality on the ground. I spoke to GM CFO Divya Siradavara this week about the automaker's strategy to keep up with Tesla's dominance in electric vehicles. We're all in on EVs, and uh, the way uh, we're demonstrating that we have a number of key vehicle launches coming. Uh, you saw the Hummer EV announcement recently, um, and we have a number of other additional strong products that are com coming as well. We're taking this seriously. We've made meaningful investments in this area. We have scale. We have multiple brands and segments where we're able to leverage our one flexible architecture and go all in. Zanny Minton Beddoes and Glenn Hubbard are back with me. So, Zanny, I hear people say what Mr. Eisman said, which is you can't possibly justify these valuations. I hear other people say you ain't seen nothing yet, that actually Tesla's going to go way, way further. So, which is it? Look, who knows? I mean, I think I'm probably more in the former. I, f I find it quite hard to justify these valuations. But I think you know, Tesla is not thinking of that. Elon Musk certainly doesn't think of this as a car company. This right. is a transformational technology that's going to accelerate the, whatever it is, the move to a sustainable world. And for a long time, he really failed to deliver, right? They had terrible production problems. There was lots and lots of talk about, you know, where they're going to run out of cash. And we have had some good news recently. You know, that factory, that gigabyte factory in, in China opened yeah. very, very fast. He's, you know, turning a, he's making some money. Production is coming online. And I think if all things come together, it is true that unlike the legacy car companies, he doesn't have a huge legacy cost of the internal combustion engine. He has really got the battery kind of supply chain sorted out. So there is potential for them to be a very, very, very big player. Whether it justifies this valuation, who knows? But I think that's kind of the punt. People want to, and this was a, a frenzy, but it was a frenzy, I think, driven by people thinking, oh, my God, this may be for real. I need to get in on it. Well, and Glenn, it raises, at least in my mind, two questions, which is, how big is this market going to be, and can Tesla maintain its lead? Because they're clearly well, ahead of everybody else. Can other people catch up, or if they got such a lead, people can't catch up? Well, that's the issue. I mean, Tesla has had good news recently. The lower cost of batteries, I think, has been a big plus, its own operational improvements. But you have to make a big macro and micro bet. So the macro bet is this is going to dominate cars going forward, period, full stop, and do so quickly. The micro bet, as you said, is can no one catch up with Tesla? You have to believe both of those things. Let's remember Tesla's market cap now is more than GM, Ford, and Fiat Chrysler yes, combined, yes. despite that they sell a minuscule fraction of the cars. That's clearly very frothy. But I think the macro bet seems sound to me. The micro bet that no other car company can catch that's where investors may want to spend some time. And, Sandy, I wonder how much of the macro bet is really China. Uh, because China was the ones that they said, we're going to go to electric vehicles. They've got a huge emissions problem there. And uh, so the rest of the world, Europe, and then certainly the United States, has sort of been caught behind that, driving that demand. I think that is a large part of the micro bet. And I think that, you know, Tesla's move there and Tesla's, do, you know, yeah. position there is, is, a, is a lot of what's driving this enthusiasm. I think part of the micro bet, however, is one about there isn't going to be another disruptive technology to, to kind of prevent EVs dominating for the foreseeable future. I think that's, you're, you're making several macro bets. That's one. You're also assuming that, you know, they have a head start on batteries and that is going to lead to, you know, serious production and serious dominance. You know, maybe. I mean, you know, I've, I've, I think I've learned to not underestimate Elon Musk. I mean, he, he is a pretty extraordinary <laughs> individual. Way, the short sellers of, of Tesla yeah, stock have also learned that I, this I, week. So, so exactly. And so, you know, he is, I, I think, a transformational figure. It is extraordinary what it's done, what this company has done. Nonetheless, this kind of, you know, surge and then even fall back of the last week seems to me to be devoid. I agree, but let's remember, transformational leaders often don't actually deliver at the end of the day. A visionary is not the same thing as an effective leader. You know, Alfred Sloan or Henry Ford 
would have been very different kinds of personalities from Elon Musk. So a lot to say well, about it, him that's it, positive. Exactly. But you could argue that Henry Ford was not really transformational in the way that Elon Musk was. He certainly was brilliant and he did things. Correct. But there was nothing that he would sort of invented from scratch. Correct. Unlike Edison, for example, exactly. who was transformational. And what happened to him? And remember, Edison created great social value, but appropriated not that much of it for himself. Uh, so maybe Elon Musk does both. Maybe so. Well, maybe so.